Hello again guys and welcome to episode 3 of Camping for Beginners. In this episode we're looking at sleeping pads and mats. I'm going to be talking about most of the things that you might want to consider when it comes to how to choose a sleeping mat or sleeping pad to take with you on your backpacking or your camping trips. We're going to look at things like pack size and weight, comfort and reliability, how much insulation that they're going to give you from the cold and how much they're going to hammer your pocket when it comes to cost. Before I crack on with it, if you've already got a sleeping mat or a sleeping pad, then please let me know which one you've got in the comments below. I'd be interested to know what everyone else is using, especially if you've got any horror stories or any good feedback when it comes to using these kind of products on your camping trips. If you're new to the channel, you might want to start with episode one of this series, which I'll link in the corner somewhere. Anyway, time to crack on with it. So before I go into all of the details, I'll show you my current selection of sleeping pads and mats. Starting with the smallest, which is the Xbed Hyperlite, and I've got the Thermares Neowear X Lite. I believe this is a Highlander foil blanket, which just adds a little bit of extra insulation to the other pads. And I've got the Big Agnes third degree close cell foam mat. And then finally, this is the Thermares Z Lite Sol S O L, which is another closed cell foam mat. So choosing the correct sleeping pad or mat can make a massive difference to your camping experience. It can be the difference between a nice cosy warm night and a freezing cold night or a nice comfortable sleep or having rocks or bumpy ground keeping you awake at night. So as you can see here sleeping pads and mats come in all different shapes and sizes and usually they come in three types of construction. They're either a closed cell foam mat, a self inflating sleeping pad or an inflatable air mattress. So the first type we're going to take a look at is the closed cell foam mat. So the closed cell foam mat is the type of mat that we all grew up with in the Boy Scouts or when we did our Duke of Edinburgh award scheme. They're very bulky, but they're also very lightweight. They're usually constructed by bonding two pieces of closed cell foam together. And a lot of these kind of foam mats also have a reflective coating on them to help improve insulation. A lot of them also have these little pockets in them where your sleeping bag can trap air in it and that can also add to the insulation properties. So the difference between closed cell foam and open cell foam is that the closed cell foam doesn't allow any sort of water to absorb into it or to penetrate the pad. So if you imagine an open cell foam is like a sponge so that would absorb lots of moisture whereas this will actually keep the moisture and the, the water out. So as you can see this kind of pad is very bulky so it tends to be strapped to the outside of your pack. But it's also pretty much indestructible so if you wanted to you could give it a little bit of a stab and it's not going to really damage it too much so because you can't really puncture this type of mat it makes it the most reliable type of sleeping mat that you can buy they're also incredibly easy to set up so basically you can just lie it out flat and that's it job done you can see where this one's had a little bit of damage but it doesn't affect the performance at all but the main problem with this kind of sleeping mat is its lack of comfort. So as you can see, it's not very thick at all. And if you're a side sleeper especially, it might not be the best choice of sleeping mat for you. Because you can still feel all of the lumps and bumps from the ground underneath. So this particular type of foam mat is a folding mat. So it concertinas up to make a reasonably compact bit of kit, which can strap to the back of your pack. But a lot of closed cell phone mats just roll up like this particular one from Big Agnes. This one also has little air pockets to try and trap in insulation. And it also has a ridge bottom which is spongy to help with the added comfort. Again, these aren't the most comfortable types of sleeping mat. But they are very durable and they're usually the cheapest type you can buy. You can get a foam mat from as little as five pounds, but you do tend to pay a little bit more for some of the branded stuff with a little bit more technology. I think this one is about 30 pounds and this was about 22 pounds. So the next type of sleeping pad we're gonna talk about is the self-inflating pad. So the self-inflating pad has a little bit more modern technology than the closed cell foam mats. It's constructed of an open cell foam, so like a sponge, which is sandwiched between an airtight layer so when you open the valve, the air rushes in and the foam expands 
and it basically does what it says on the tin. It inflates the pad for the majority by itself. So I don't actually own a self-inflating pad myself anymore, but I have owned several of them, including the British Army version and the Alpkit Aero 180. So some of the more expensive self-inflating pads have special insulation inside them, which allows you to sleep down to colder temperatures. Self-inflating pads are smaller than the closed cell foam pads, but they are still bulkier than the more modern uh, sleeping air pads. So once you've allowed one of these pads to self-inflate, it usually takes a few breaths afterwards to inflate it fully and then seal the valve and it's ready to sleep on. So because a self-inflating pad is a mixture of air and foam, it makes it more comfortable than a closed cell foam pad. However, because it does require an airtight enclosure around the foam, it does make it susceptible to punctures so it's nowhere near as reliable as a closed cell foam mat. But self-inflating pads aren't a huge amount more comfortable than these. Um, they tend to be only around an inch thick unless you go really bulky with the pack size. One thing to remember with a self-inflating pad is you're better off not storing them compressed. So when you get home after you've been on your camp, release the valve and let the air fill up and then store it somewhere in its self-inflated state. So this prolongs the life of the open cell foam and the life of your sleeping pad. So the last type of sleeping pad we're going to talk about is an air mattress. As you can see, these are incredibly small and they're also lightweight. If you compare the size of the Xbed Hyperlite to that of the Thermarest Z Lite, it's an insane amount of volume difference. That being said, this is actually probably a little bit lighter than this and it's never going to burst. So if comfort is not your priority, I'd definitely look at something like this. So the main advantages for me for air mattress is that they're incredibly lightweight, their pack size is virtually nothing, and they're so much more comfortable than the other types of mat. But these type of pads definitely require more work as they need inflating. So there's a number of different ways on how you can inflate these pads. The main method that most people use is just to open the valve and to blow in it. Now in a pad this size it normally takes about 30 good breaths to inflate it. So one of the issues that I've had with actually blowing into the pad, I'll show you a little bit later with this pad, is that adding moisture from your breath adds moisture inside your pad. So this can lead to a build up of mould over time. So there are a number of solutions for not getting moisture in your air pad. So the first one I'm going to show you is a pump sack inflator. This is basically a large dry bag. This particular one from Thermarest got a hole in it, which fits over your valve on your sleeping pad. And then you get some air into the dry bag. There's one. Then you just seal the valve. So that took four and a half bags, I think, to fully inflate. As you can see, it's not inflated incredibly firmly. So if you wanted to add a little bit more, just put one breath in. But that has drastically reduced the amount of moisture that's gone in there. So Thermarest also supply a mini electric pump, which you can use to inflate the pad takes about five or ten minutes where you can just plug it in and leave it. That does require it having batteries though and in cold weather that can be a little bit unreliable. So for that reason most of the time I take a pump sack. This type of pad inflates slightly differently. There's a little plug and the pump sack just clips straight into the sleeping pad. So one bonus about this pad, and it's got a one-way valve. So when you remove the pump sack, none of the air escapes. So this is what I wanted to show you earlier about putting moisture inside your pad. You may be able to see lots of little black dots. So they are mould that's inside the pad. You can see it a little bit better in the sunlight. 
So another thing you might wish to consider is the baffles. So on the X bed, they go down the length of the pad, yet on the thermo rest, they go horizontally. I actually find the vertical baffles much more comfortable. But that's mainly because it stops me from rolling off the pad in the middle of the night. So as you can see, an air mattress is much thicker. This makes it incredibly comfortable. But although they may be comfortable, some of them can be quite noisy as well. Especially the thermo rest. It sounds like you're sleeping on a bag of crisps. You must remember that not all air mattresses are equal. Some of the cheaper ones literally are that. They're just a mattress that stores air inside. But these two in particular have insulation which is built into them, which stops you getting cold at night. Some of the cheaper air mattresses offer no insulation whatsoever. So therefore, no matter what your sleeping bag is, you're still probably going to end up with a cold night in the colder months. So although these mattresses are incredibly comfortable, they're also very vulnerable when it comes to punctures. A few years back, uh, air mattresses were not very reliable, but some of the materials now are much better. And there are cases where people have done things like the Appalachian Trail and have slept for hundreds of nights without any sort of problems on something like a Thermarest. But that doesn't mean that you won't get punctures. So it's important that you always take the repair kit with you. Most mattresses come with a repair kit supplied. Usually consists of a patch of material and a little bit of glue. This one also has instructions in it too. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about insulation. So the whole point of having a sleeping mat or a pad so it's to stop you losing body heat to the ground below. So if you were to go to sleep directly on the ground, you will start to feel the cold even in the warmer months. The mat or the pad is designed to, to give a layer of insulation to stop your body heat transferring down to the ground below. So when it comes to sleeping mats and pads, um, the gauge that they use for measuring how well insulated it is, is called an R value. So the way that R values work is in a linear format. So basically something that has an R value of four will have twice the insulation of something that has an R value of two, if that makes sense. So recently in 2020, they brought in some new guidelines when it comes to measuring R values. It used to be the case that manufacturers could just simply slap an R value on the packaging and say that the product would go down to a certain temperature. But now in order to do that, they've got to demonstrate and have testing done to ensure that the R value is correct. So you get different R values for different sleeping pads and mats. The R value of a Neowear X light is 4.2, whereas the R value of this Z light is only 2. So therefore, you'll get just over twice as much insulation from the ground below using the X light. Over the Z light, there are websites that you can go on to get information on what R value translates to roughly in temperature. The X light goes down to about minus 6 degrees Celsius, which I can confirm is pretty accurate and I find that does me for most of the time in the UK. There is something you can do, however, is to increase the R value of your sleeping pad, is to double them up. So putting your air mattress on top of a closed sole mat will make a big difference in the overall insulation value of your sleeping system. So as you may have seen in one of my earlier videos, I did have a little bit of a mishap with the Neo Air X Lite. So one of the baffles burst out a little bit it didn't deflate but it did have a bulge inside the air mattress which made it uncomfortable for the night so it did rock my confidence a little bit in air mattresses so especially in cold weather if you were to lose the inflation in this permanently then you're going to have a very cold night so now i started taking a closed cell foam mat with me as well so not only does it give me extra insulation but it gives me peace of mind that if the air mattress does um, let me down for any reason I have got a backup and I'm not going to be laid directly on cold ground. So one other thing to bear in mind with an air mattress, if it does state an R value, it's for when the, the pad is completely inflated. Sometimes I like to let a little bit of air out of the mattress, which makes it a little less firm and more comfortable. However, that will reduce the R value slightly. I'm not sure what the percentage will be, but please bear that in mind. I'm now going to talk a little bit about the variety in costs when it comes to sleeping pads and and mats. You can pay huge amounts of cash, especially for the more modern air mattresses. So good quality air mattresses can range from anywhere up to £50 to £200, which is a huge investment when it comes to something you're just going to use when you're camping. So if you're somebody that's not going to go camping very often, 
I wouldn't recommend that you spend the money on something like an X-Bed or a Thermarest because you're just not going to get good value for money. You're much better off buying a cheap closed cell foam mat and then adding a cheap air mattress to it uh, to give you that little bit of extra comfort. However, if you're the sort of person that takes your camping a little bit more seriously, you go out regular and you go to some quite remote places where it can get chilly, then it's probably going to be a good investment to get something a little bit more professional. But if you can live without comfort for a little while, you can't go wrong with just a closed cell foam mat. It's cheap as chips and it'll last you forever. So in summary, when it comes to choosing a sleeping pad or mat, it's all about prioritizing your needs. As we've already discussed, there's lots of things to consider, such as comfort, pack size, weight, the insulation value, and obviously how much it costs. I do believe if you're gonna take your camping seriously, then it would be a wise move to invest in something that is a little bit more professional. But if you're only going out once in a blue moon, I wouldn't bother shelling out for something that's gonna cost you hundred pound just to make one night comfortable. For the more budget friendly, I would consider doubling up when it comes to a cheap air mattress and a closed cell foam mat. You can always supplement it with something like this five pound Highlander lightweight foil mat, which will add a little bit more warmth to your sleep system. One important thing to bear in mind is that your sleeping pad is just part of your sleeping system. If you haven't got a sleeping bag that isn't up to the job, then your sleeping pad can only do so much. And vice versa, if you've got a really good sleeping bag, yet you haven't got any insulation from the ground, the temperature rating of your sleeping bag will be drastically reduced. Please let me know in the comments below what kind of sleeping pad you use. I'm especially interested if anyone's used the Sea to Summit pads, as I've heard that they're incredibly comfortable. So if you're interested in the next episode in the series where I'll be looking at sleeping bags, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and ding that bell, and that way you'll be notified when the next video is released. Hope you found the video useful, and if you've got any questions at all, drop them in the comments below, and I'll try and answer them as quickly as possible.